In this video, we're going to show you how to put a set of Paul Yaffe 10 inch monkey bars quickly and easily on this 2015 Street Glide. Hey folks, I'm Robert with Hill Country Custom Cycles. I've got a 2015 Street Glide here, and we're going to put these. 10 inch tall Paul Yaffe monkey bars on here. And we're gonna show you a real quick and easy way to do that. And what we've got, this is our complete plug and play setup, uh, one of our most popular kits because it's really easy to install. All the wiring's done for you. We got our plug and play connectors right here. You don't have to do any splicing, cutting, stringing, none of that mess. Uh, in this particular case, the customer wanted chrome hand controls, chrome switches. He bought some grips, so we put those on for him at no charge. And really, it's going to be a matter of bolting these bars down to the risers and then changing out the clutch line, the brake line, and then we're going to be riding. So, uh, pretty quick install. Check it out and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, so just real quick, uh, we've got this bike on a lift because it's much easier to do these videos on a lift and we have one. Why not use it? We can raise it up and down. But most people don't have one, so you're either going to have you know, a jack or something like this, which works out really great for this job. Uh, you don't even need a jack at all. You can do it on the kickstand. The bike doesn't need to be elevated. So regardless of how you do it, first step, get the saddlebags off and get the seat off. And then we're gonna move the tank. Okay, so saddlebags and cedar off. Um, we want to get the tank out of the way. So number one, don't fill your tank up because it's super heavy when it's full. Make sure it's as empty as you can get it. If it's full, just be sure you ate your Wheaties that morning, right? So we've got the uh, fuel pump connector here. We're gonna disconnect that. We've got our little fuel line here. We're gonna take that off right there. And then the last piece, is this vent hose right here. It goes all the way down to the bottom. There's a couple zip ties that hold it in place and I'm always looking for how can I do it faster. So what I do is I take and cut that line right here like so and then part of our installation kit is this little uh, hose fitting here. When we go back together with it we'll just put it in there like so and then anytime we need to take our tank off we can just pull it right back out like we did on this line and it makes pulling the tank off way way easier. So this is a quick disconnect and real simple. It's gonna squirt a little bit of fuel out, but just push that up. Sometimes you have to twist it a little bit like so, and it'll come right out, just like that. Got a rag there to catch all your fuel so it doesn't get on your primary, and you're good to go. We've got some half inch bolts here. Pull this rubber grommet off right here and repeat on the other side. So firmly grab your gas tank, lift it up, make sure nothing's attached, and go put it in a safe place. So now we're gonna pull the ignition switch out. You wanna put your key in. There's a tab underneath where my finger is that I'm gonna show you in just a second, but you push that tab up key in counterclockwise and this thing comes up. Push that down and the key turns backwards. Repeat that on the other side. I'm taking the dash panel off, pull it out and back. You got the connectors on either side. Undo those. This one pushes from the bottom side. Just like that. We've got four T27 bolts out here. 
and then three up front and this outer fairing comes off along with the windshield. So we're gonna take those out. I'll show you how to pull this off by yourself. You know, it's super easy to do. And then from there, it's a matter of getting this fairing forward and we're almost halfway there. Now this one, you're going to unscrew it. The screw will stay there. Everything will stay together. We've got our last bolt here. Let's take this bolt out. Stick it in your pocket. comes off just like so. Unplug our headlight, however that's configured. And then we are good to go. Make sure to put your fairing in a safe place so it doesn't get messed up. on the other side. The lower fairing off. All right, so now we just gotta get this fairing up and out. So it's real simple. You just wanna lift up and back. Real easy to do, just lift straight up a couple inches. Just like that. And that exposes your handlebar clamp. You can let it lay right there, no problem at all. And now we can get all this pulled out and get these handlebars out of the way. So we got a connector here, throttle sensor. We got a connector here. We got a connector up in here. So that's our right side harness. And then our last connector is right here. And that pulls free. Okay, so we've got all this exposed. Man, everything's right there. You know, we need to get these four bolts out, get the handlebars off. We've got our, you know, our wiring all disconnected, but we still have our, our lines. So the way I do it, I don't disconnect the lines up here because then fluid goes everywhere. And then when you pull the lines off the bike, fluid goes everywhere and it's a mess. And it's dot four. So, you know, dot four can be corrosive if you don't get it off quick enough. So what I do is pull the master cylinders off the handlebars, leave them attached to the lines and kind of hang them down. If you're lucky, you may have some of these laying around to kind of put over them and protect them while they're dangling there. And these are, you know, available at your local beverage distributor, if you're familiar with that. And then once we get these off, we'll pull the bars off and then we'll go back to disconnect the lines from their respective places and pull them out with the lines attached to the master cylinders. And again, we're doing this to try to eliminate mess of DOP4 brake fluid.
Now we're ready to pull this off. Sometimes it's necessary to loosen the exhaust up to move it away from the transmission cover in order to get the transmission cover out. Now we're going to get our cable pulled out of here. Be sure to remember the routing, how the routing went. This line here is the one we're going to take off. Half inch wrench. Put a little flange bolt in there. Tighten that up. This will prevent any brake fluid from leaking as we Run this thing out of here. And be careful to watch where it routes. We just put on some new crush washers that come in the kit. Be careful not to cross thread your line. Okay, so now we got all of our lines pretty much ran and, and tidied up. Um, it's time to put the bars on, but before we do, you know, if you're gonna replace your riser bushings, this is probably a good time to do it. Now, we're not gonna do it right now. We're actually gonna do a separate video on that, so you can watch that in a little bit. Um, we're just gonna go ahead and mount the bars. But I wanted to talk about this, the Gorilla Grabber, just a little bit. We're gonna put these bars on here with the Gorilla Grabber on there and go ahead and tighten everything down. And then we're gonna loosen these two front bolts up so that when we put the fairing back on, we can adjust the bars. And then these two bolts are the only ones we have left to tighten back down. And we don't have to keep taking the fairing on and off and messing with all that. So, here we go. So 
Try to get them centered as best you can. They don't have to be super tight. It's got to be snug. All right, so we got the bars put on. Uh, now we need to go ahead and put the seat on there and sit on it and kind of see where they line up. This is when you want to adjust them. So get in here and just kind of move them around where you want them. I've got the, these bottom bolts loose here like we talked about. I'm gonna put these where they feel comfortable and then uh, we can tighten these bolts down right here and everything is good to go. We're going to plug our connectors in.
Okay, so we've got everything pretty well buttoned up. I want to leave the outer fairing off uh, only because I want to turn the key on here and just check all my switches and everything and make sure everything's functioning properly and there's not an electrical issue or, or whatever because if there is, we want to pull the stuff back off before we get it all back together, you know. So just check everything out. Everything's good. Button her up. Put the center bolt in first so that it lines everything up and holds everything in place. Now I'm just gonna get these bolts in, not tight, just get them started. And again, we wanna get all of our bolts started. And then we'll go back and All right, folks, there you have it. 10-inch Yaffe bars put on this new street line here. Hopefully this video helped you out and showed you how easy this project really is. And uh, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please let us know or give us a call at the shop. And uh, thanks for watching.